We acknowledge the Max offices and Catholic schools in the Archdiocese of Melbourne are situated on the land of the five language groups that make up the Kulin Nations, who have walked upon and cared for this land since time immemorial. We acknowledge their continued deep spiritual connection and relationship to country. We pay our respects to the elders, past, present, and future, and commit to the ongoing journey of truth-telling and deep listening, working together for reconciliation and justice. Good morning, my name is Dr. Edward Simons and as Acting Executive Director of Melbourne Archdiocese Catholic Schools and Director of Catholic Education in the Archdiocese, I warmly welcome you all to this Mass of St. Patrick for Schools, the liturgical highlight of our Catholic Education Week. Thank you for joining us as we give thanks for Catholic Education in Melbourne. I'm delighted to see so many of you gathered here at the cathedral and would also like to welcome those joining us via the live stream. Catholic Education Week celebrates the very best of our sector. The principals, teachers, students and families who come together to make our vibrant Catholic learning communities so special for 155,000 students across the Archdiocese. That so many of you are here today as the golden light streams through our cathedral windows is a realization of our mission to form lives of faith, hope and love in the light of Jesus Christ. Indeed, the golden light from these windows is reflected in both our new Max logo and Max 2030 strategic materials. I would like to acknowledge and thank the representatives from both the Victorian and Commonwealth parliaments for their attendance here today. Senator Sarah Henderson and Senator Raf Ciccone, the Honourable David Hodgett and the Honourable Brad Rosewell. We thank you for joining us and for your continued support of Catholic education. We welcome also James Molino, Chair of the Catholic Education Commission of Victoria Implementation Committee, and Jim Miles, Executive Director of Catholic Education Commission Victoria. I also wish to acknowledge Jared Del Bosco, Chair of Melbourne Archdiocese Catholic Schools Board, along with his fellow Max Board Directors. Our sincere thanks go to Archbishop Peter for leading today's celebration of Mass and to his concelebrating bishops and priests. I would now like to invite the procession to begin. Please remain seated. Thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Wow, isn't it wonderful to see our St. Patrick's Cathedral so full uh, today on St. Patrick's own feast day. And welcome to all of our uh, Catholic school community here in Melbourne Archdiocese on this uh, lovely occasion. To all our schools that are present here by way of the representatives of students and staff, welcome indeed to uh, those who are a part of the administration of our schools in, in uh, head office. Welcome indeed to uh, Ed, 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 sorry, Edward uh, Simons, who is acting executive director and to the uh, leadership of Max, to Jared Darbosco, uh, chair of the board, and to the board members, all welcome. To the clergy who have gathered here, the auxiliary bishops, the Episcopal Vicar for Catholic Education, members of the board and others involved in Catholic Education, all of you are most welcome today. And so friends, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, who chose the Bishop St. Patrick to preach your glory to the peoples of Ireland, grant through his merits and intercession that those who glory in the name of Christian may never cease to proclaim your wondrous deeds to all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord was addressed to me, saying, Before I knew you in the womb, I knew you. Before you came to birth, I consecrated you. I have appointed you as prophet to the nations. I said, Ah, Lord, I do not know how to speak. I am a child. But the Lord replied, Do not say, I am a child. Go now to those to whom I send you, and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to protect you. It is the Lord who speaks. Then the Lord put his hand out and touched my mouth and said to me, There, I am putting my words into your mouth. The word of the Lord.
The second reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly to the Jews. We had to proclaim the word of God to you first, but since you have rejected it, since you do not think yourselves worthy of eternal life, we must turn to the pagans, for this is what the Lord commanded us to do when he said, I have made you a light for the nations, so that my salvations may reach the ends of the earth. It made the pagans very happy to hear this, and they thanked the Lord for his message. All who were destined for eternal life became believers. Thus, the word of the Lord spread through the whole countryside. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out ahead of him in pairs to all the towns and places he himself was to visit. He said to them, the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. Start off now, but remember, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Carry no purse, no haversack, no sandals. Salute no one on the road. Whatever house you go into, let your first words be, peace to this house. And if a man of peace lives there, your peace will go and rest on him. If not, it will come back to you. Stay in the same house, taking what food and drink they have to offer, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you go into a town where they make you welcome, eat what is set before you. Cure those in it who are sick and say, the kingdom of God is very near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not make you welcome, go out into its streets and say, we wipe off the very dust of your town that clings to our feet and leave it with you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is very near. I tell you, on that day, it will not go as hard with Sodom as with that town. The 72 came back rejoicing. Lord, they said, even the devils submit to us when we use your name. He said to them, I watched Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Yes, I have given you power to tread underfoot serpents and scorpions and the whole strength of the enemy, 
nothing shall ever hurt you. Yet do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. Rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. As you, as you can all very plainly see, I am well over the age of 16. As you can also see, I'm standing. I make mention of both of these things because at the risk of being a fool, perhaps for risk of the fool for Christ's sake, and asking others to join me in my foolishness, can I now, in fact, ask that any one of you here today who is 16 years or older to now please stand? Are they standing behind me? Yes, good. <laughs> Thank you. At the age of 16, St. Patrick was taken into slavery. It was the moment that triggered all that would follow in his life. For it was then that he found friendship with God and began to live the way of missionary discipleship. This decision would eventually lead him to Ireland and the conversion of its peoples to the Christian faith. 16 is a young age, isn't it? For those of us standing, think back to what it was like being 16 and the decisions you were making then. Or for those of you who might be around, I can see some of you over there, who might be around the age of 16, 17, 18, think of what it might be like if you were making decisions right now for the rest of your life. Well, that's what Patrick was doing at 16. His journey from that age gradually unfolded for him. But it is important that we acknowledge that he did not know what was coming and where it would lead. What Patrick did do at 16 was to say yes to God and to place his trust in him. We today are the beneficiaries of this. Without Patrick's 16-year-old yes and without the Christian faith that has been handed down through the centuries and across the oceans to us, our gathering here, right now, as Christian disciples in the mission of Catholic education, would not have happened. Think of that. And you can be seated.
Can I now ask those who are under 16 years of age to stand? Heaps more of you, isn't that good? You, under 16s, can be like Patrick, even at your younger age. We heard a bit of that in our first reading today, when we heard about Jeremiah. Jeremiah, we heard, was a child, probably an adolescent, when God called to him to be his voice and messenger among the people. We hear now that Jeremiah tried to get out of it. Ah, Lord, I can't speak properly. But God would have none of that. God trusted Jeremiah. Do not be afraid was the Lord's encouragement to him. And God says the same to you who are under 16. Do not be afraid. And you can sit now too. I'll keep standing. To all of us, over or under 16, God always makes the first move. God opened Patrick's heart. God opened Jeremiah's mouth. God entrusted to them his life and message. God trusted them. And from that moment, Jeremiah and Patrick learned to trust. And they each found a way of walking with God for the rest of their lives. God trusts you. Jesus trusts you. The Spirit is saying to each of us, go out and tell the good news. We can do this wherever we are and however old we might be. We can do it with words that come from God that bring life and by actions like Jesus that attend to the good of each one other. God trusts in us. Just like he trusted in Jeremiah and those 72 disciples Jesus sent, we heard about. And Paul and Barnabas speaking to the Gentiles, as we also heard. God trusts us like he trusted St. Patrick. Our part is to lean into this trust and let God do the rest. It is for us to respond simply and humbly to God's entrustment, I think, with five simple words. Jesus, I trust in you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And let us all stand now as we profess our faith. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, following the example of St. Patrick, who called upon God in faith in his most difficult times, so we now turn to God with our prayers. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Peter and all church leaders, may they be graced with wisdom, strength and courage as they guide us to share the joy of the gospel. Lord, hear us. For the world leaders who those who hold political office, may they work for the benefit of all people like St. Patrick, see peace, promote justice. Lord, hear us. For all our students in our Catholic schools, may they be inspired by St. Patrick and strive to grow in faith, hope and love in the light of Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. For all teachers and catechists and families, may they be like St. Patrick and share the gift of faith, bringing the joy of the gospel to the young people entrusted to their care, Lord hear us. For those who are sick, lonely, lost or troubled, may they receive hope and comfort from us as a reflection of God's loving care in their time of need. Lord hear us. For all young people who will gather in Lisbon for World Youth Day this year, may they experience the transformative power of God's presence in their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. God, our loving Father, hear the prayers of your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Rejoicing in the gift of faith, O Lord, we bring you these offerings. Grant that through the prayers and example of St. Patrick, our lives may be united to Christ our Saviour in a holy sacrifice of praise through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvellous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example leads us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Patrick, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, his assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your home. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever. At our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your Let us turn to one another and offer a gift of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but I just say this in my soul.
Let us pray.
Receive, almighty Father, the body and blood of your Son. We have known a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. Grant that in communion with St. Patrick and all our forebears in faith, we may be true to your commandments on earth and so share eternal joy in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. It has been truly a wonderful celebration this morning and a very fitting way to give thanks for Catholic education during Catholic Education Week. Our thanks to Archbishop Peter for leading today's celebrations and for his words of encouragement and guidance to us all. Thank you also to the concelebrating bishops and priests joining us for today's Mass and for your support and leadership of mission in our school communities. Special thanks to all the students who participated as servers and readers from a range of schools this morning. And a special thanks to Avila College, students who conducted the music, our choir, our cantors and the musicians. Thank you very much. It was an enormous um, addition to our celebration this morning. Thank you. And to all the leaders, teachers and students for coming in today to join us in this celebration. I know it takes a bit of organisation to get you all in here and it's very much appreciated. Thank you. Celebrating Mass together is an essential expression of our mission to form lives of faith, hope and love in the light of Jesus Christ so that our students are inspired to flourish and enrich the world. As we leave today, I hope you are filled with a spirit of missionary discipleship to take the Gospels with you into your hearts and into the work you do in our parliaments, schools and organisations. Thank you for celebrating Mass with us this morning. Mary, thank you, and uh, you name quite well just uh, what is worthwhile acknowledging here today, so thank you very much. Um, and I also just want to acknowledge in our uh, presence today are some of our parliamentarians and those who uh, serve our country and our state in uh, various ways. I want to acknowledge your presence among our Catholic uh, school communities today. Isn't it wonderful? Just I invite you all just to look around and see all of yourselves, which is great. You represent actually quite a small proportion of all of our students and staff who are uh, involved in uh, Catholic educating in different ways throughout our Archdiocese. So it's wonderful that we can gather on this occasion each year and uh, to do so in such good numbers but acknowledging in doing so the very, very many more who are, it would be nice if they're all here. Um, maybe we can ask the government if we can have um, uh, the Royal Exhibition Building one year and we can fit everyone in one go maybe. That'd be great. Uh, but it is wonderful that we are able to gather in this way. Following uh, the conclusion of our celebration of the Mass today, uh, as has become something of a little bit of a tradition, though COVID put an end to that for a bit, uh, there will be an opportunity for school groups to have a group photo uh, with me and any other bishop or priest that wants to hang around for photos. <laughs> um, uh, I would ask that uh, there will be ushers available to you at, at the front and you'll make your way around to the side and the photos will be taken on the uh, side steps uh, over on this side. 
uh, and there will be people to guide you, but have your group together. There will be, uh, there'll be photographers there, so you don't need to worry about um, your mobile phones or anything like that. That will be all available and we can get the photos for those who wish to um, after the celebration of the Mass. Now let us stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.